Hello there, folks. Halo here with my friend Seek. Hello. And we have an absolute monster of a Aurobot build guide for you today. Uh, in fact, this build guide is so big, there's so much contained in it, that when we went to try to export it to pob.in, it, uh, it didn't let us because the string that Path of Building generates was too big. Uh, this was very quickly fixed by the developer of pop.in, so props to them, they, uh, they were right on top of it. But that just gives you an idea of how much stuff is now contained in this, in this absolute beast. So, uh, Seek, why don't you uh, tell us about all the good things that happened to Aurobots this patch? Yeah, by all means, I'm, I'm pretty excited. There's a lot to be excited about. Um, I guess before getting into the improvements to the guide, uh, let's all just take a moment and consider all the old masteries that we lost, the reservation masteries for every aura, and realize that we are getting essentially all of that power concentrated on a single mastery that we get on the mana node, and that leaves us to, free to get masteries everywhere else across the tree. There have been a bunch of great additions um, for the build. The, there's some incredibly powerful masteries that they added. Uh, the ones we gave up were good, right? We used them in the build. We felt all right about it, but uh, ultimately they were pretty costly point-wise. Uh, with the new setup, there's a lot more masteries that we can use, such as the chance to suppress spell damage is lucky, the armor applies to chaos hits on the left side of the tree, the evasion per int on the right side, and so on. Um, these all accumulate to make the build much, much stronger than it was in previous patches. Um, in addition to this change, uh, on top of the actual buffs that we received, we have gone through the POB and massively rehauled it. So in addition to being stronger, the build is uh, a lot easier to navigate. There's more info on the POB. We've added additional investment levels, different ways to level. We have considered, uh, we've gone through through all the items and rechecked everything, optimized it. It's going to be uh, things like Divine Blessing come online a lot faster. Um, they're a lot easier to use. There, there are a couple of sort of inconveniences like that Divine Blessing that has been woven into the build. You don't need to, uh, it's going to be available earlier. And on, in the later versions, you're not going to need to press the flask and have to worry about any of that. It's just incorporated into one of your utility flasks. Um, on top of that, we have additional versions, right? So there are a couple additional transitional versions, such as this mid-mapping right here, um, that just sort of help indicate what your priorities are as you go from the early mapping to the late mapping. Um, we also have the budget endgame and endgame versions, which are previously known as the 800C and 2000C versions. Those have been updated, obviously, as the rest of it has, and the names have been updated as well. Um, they're no longer tied down to a certain price. We haven't changed that much, right? All we've done is optimize them. The price is more or less the same as it was last patch. Yeah, you um, know... It's actually a little bit lower, but we just don't... We, we want to avoid another synthesis helmet incident where the build costs three times as much as it's, uh, as it's labeled. Yeah, every time, both times, we tried to like make price points for the guides. Uh, a crazy economy stuff happened. We had the Calandra incident where uh, uniques were nerfed, there wasn't loot, and then, yeah, the synthesis helm incident, so we, we've just standardized them as not actual price points, just to uh, to avoid that happening for a third time. Uh, also, right. there's demo trees for Timeless Jewels, and you have collected entire folders of Timeless Jewels for people to use. Right? That should That's make right. it so Normally much it's, easier. Uh, pretty hard to find them, right? Uh... Like, it, it's annoying to search for them in POB if you know how to do that. Then you also have to compete with the Timeless Shul Cartel and stuff. Um, so we have the Militant Faiths and etc. that are used in some of the later versions of the build. And then one thing we're experimenting with is we've got... Um, there's a sort of a an price point where you can actually make good use out of a Brutal Restraint uh, in the build to give aura effect in between the... what are now called the... Uh, budget endgame and endgame variants, right? And so what I've done here is I've included two separate trees that show how you can incorporate them 
Uh, they're like demos, they're an example of how you can incorporate them. If you have to spend more points, what do you drop elsewhere? And then we're going to, as Halo mentioned, I've got uh, a couple of trade folders, folders that just contain listing after listing of timeless jewels, right? There are hundreds of seeds that potentially can be beneficial for the build. And I've listed like 80 to 100 of them in separate jewel sockets. Uh, right now, this is limited to the brutal restraints, um, specifically the 16% and 24% or effect ones for for those two jewel sockets. But it is should be uh, should be a pretty cool yeah. feature, and we might expand it to other yeah. things later on, such and as. Uh, uh, elegant elegant hubris, hubris, yeah. and so on and so forth. And those brutal restraints are really cheap. Like people don't really buy them. A lot of people aren't checking for aura effect. Like on League Start, you know, you can see those for a lot of time. And now, now with a bunch of people using the guide, maybe that'll be less the case. But it's there. It's still crazy how cost efficient brutal restraints are for aura bots early on. Uh, you know, if you know which ones to look for. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's also um, higher investment. So after the old 2000 C setup, there is a high investment version here that you've that you've made yeah um, so previously the last build ended at the uh end game version right the 2000 c um we now have that version has been updated to be a little bit costly uh, a little bit less costly right and then we've introduced the high investment end game version which builds off of it the tree looks somewhat similar we are still using uh, a militant faith here, but we're getting a two-stat militant faith, supplementing it with an unnatural instinct. Um, we are actually using the Scion's ability to path down to uh, Path of the Duelist, and I'll get into this version more uh, when we do a version overview of all of them, but this is something around like 50 or 60 div. It's a lot more powerful and a lot smoother. Um. Um, as far as flasks and just general aura effect giving you everything you want. We should quickly uh, touch... Than the, the normal endgame version. Yeah. yeah. We should quickly touch on bubonic boots. Um, they were added this patch 20, up to 24% generic reservation efficiency on boots. These are likely to be best in slot for an aura bot. But there's no way to know how much they cost. And it's not an item you can just slot in and out. If you... If you, if you have a build version and we just put that as a fundamental part of a build and those end up being like 50 divine boots, the entire build version is bricked and you could no longer play it. So yeah, I'm sure you have a lot more thoughts on that. Yeah, or, you know, uh, so. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later. But yeah, like the, the bubonics are really good for the build, right? As you said, they're likely best in slot. Um, but bubonics are not necessarily what make Orobots really good this patch, right? They received a lot of buffs, yeah. primarily through the Masteries. Um, all of these versions are going to be more powerful than they were, uh, pretty much without exception, than in the previous patch, um, regardless of what happens with bubonics, right? If they are cheap, it's really nice, um, and you can slot them in. Um, you can do some other things with high investment, such as using bubonics to supplement reservation, pathing all the way around the left with an elegant hubris. Um, you can also just put them on the high investment endgame version over Syntrex. Loses a little bit of ES, but it, it frees up your reservation. Um, and we'll get to that later. But yeah, we'll cover the versions one by one. Really, too. really good. Not required for any of the builds listed here. Uh, um, um, that is, except for the aspirational endgame build, um, so unlike the other builds, this one isn't really meant to be followed exactly to the letter. Um, it is a fully functioning endgame character, uh, but the, the goal of it is more to showcase sort of what a, a you know, like a giga high investment uh, endgame aura bot can look like. This one is Mage Blood plus uh, Mage Blood and CI. It uses voices to get a bunch of cluster jewels. Um, it uses an elevated a double elevated redeemer chest uh, with like 500 energy shield. It uses, because it's CI, it uses Matua Tapuna to get additional aura effect. Um, in the top of the tree, it uses an elegant hubris to get 36% aura effect right here. Um, because of the price of some of these items, because of the variance on timeless jewels like this elegant hubris, the guide is, or this character can be a little bit hard to recreate. It's not meant uh, to be yes 
it could if, be recreated, but it's not meant to be followed 100%. It's just there to show you these are some things that yeah. endgame versions build around. These and, are the absurd stats that they have. And if you manage to farm and, the yeah. several mirrors it'll take to recreate it, you know, you, you probably... You know, you, you probably have the, the, the game knowledge to uh to just kind of build off this in your own in your own way. Um all right, uh let's let's go through the different leveling. Do you wanna start with the leveling first? We'll talk about the Orobot transition version and the Spark version. Uh yeah, sure. So as we mentioned earlier, we got two leveling versions. One of them is the Orbistorm Stormblast Mine Tree. This is still the strongest way to get uh, to Act 4, pretty much, um, where the where this tree allows you to transition to an Ouroboros. So this is the tree where you want to be as strong as possible until you can be an Ouroboros as early as possible. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I wanted to add here, because a lot of people have reported really enjoying Lightning Trap, we have not had any time to test the skill, so, you know, this is just something we wanted to mention real quick. The new Trap Mastery here, um, you should be able to take this Trap Mastery, uh, you know, take this Trap Wheel, and then play this basically the same as you would an Orb of Storm Stormblast Mine character. Again, we haven't tested that, but it's a, it's an option to consider if you just really hate uh, Stormblast and don't want to play the Spark version either. Yeah, it's a... Uh, again, we couldn't test it, but it seems seems pretty good. Pretty efficient passives right out the gate. Um, that being said, it, it, it is pretty hard to beat Orb of Storm Stormblast Mine, hence why we are still using it. Um, one of the main losses this patch was the um one of the only things really that made the aura bots life harder uh and not even in endgame but in leveling is the loss of the wand crafts right previously using the wand crafts with like a transmute a rare ring um or transmute a wand a rare ring and an alteration you were able to guarantee a big power spike at level 14 and level 20 right you just get a bunch of flat added lightning and it would carry you pretty much like to the end of act three um because we don't have that we're going to do two things one of those is using a wand a bit later on um we have these wands on the the leveling tree basically what you're looking to do is id a rare wand off the ground or just throw like an essence on it maybe an essence of woe which gives spell damage but you really can't be picky and then once you've killed piety you unlock a flat lightning damage to spell craft uh i believe it's four or six transmutes i think it's four but uh, I'm, I'm yeah I, maybe six is two-handed right uh, yeah that, that um, sounds either way right. it costs it costs transmutes and once you kill Piety at level 28-ish, at the end of yeah. towards the end of Act Three, um, you can craft that on a rare wand, even a magic wand, and it's pretty much going to be even more powerful than the wand crafts were, right? Numerically, yeah. Um, to supplement the losses that we incurred early on, right? Not having the wand crafts at level 14 and 20, um, we've modified the pathing a bit. Basically, you start taking ash frost and storm you rush elemental overload um and then unlike last time where we took crackling speed and went immediately to sovereignty and had no life um and sort of wasted points paying paying a little bit for the the cast speed on crackling speed what we do now is we go to templar start which has just this incredible density of highly efficient nodes you get 15 percent increased damage then you spend two more points and you get uh, increased life and discipline and training, which is the best life node in the entire game. And we're just talking max life. Then you spend another three points. You get Holy Dominion, which is all res, elemental damage, chance to shock. You get Light of Divinity. Um, and these things all add up to make the build much uh, more well-rounded than it was before. Um, before, it passed very aggressively, despite like not actually transitioning to an aura bot right then and there um we also take the life mastery here uh on the quick recovery wheel for 50 extra life um a little bit later on towards level 40 which is like when you're going to be potentially looking to swap to an aura bot uh you can take the life mastery over here 15 percent increased max life if there are no life modifiers on body armor uh given that you're leveling there aren't going to be make sure there aren't right um, it would be a shame to lose such a massive bonus to having a little bit of life on the body armor, but as a whole, the build is going to be much, much tankier than it was last time. The cost, quote-unquote cost, of doing this is that uh, it requires, like, 
you have to basically either go back to Act 1 and farm fetid pools, or you have to drop, like, one or two regret orbs between you, not even right when you transition, but, like, by Act 6 or 7, Yeah. right? Um, so as a whole, this is going to be much more well-rounded. It is still Orb of Storm Stormblast Mine. Um, might be a little uncomfortable for some people, but I see it as a good thing because it is a very strong way to get to Act 4. And, and it brings the damage, and the new tree brings the life, basically. Yeah, and we'll we'll cover it in just a little bit, but you can always level as the Spark character too. Just a different skill, yeah, different we, uh, you can swap There, there is an alternative um, if Orb of Storm Stormblast is not to your liking. We, or a tested alternative. Lightning Trap, again, could be could be good, but we've not been able to test it. And the league starts in like nine hours and we still got to sleep. You know, it's, we're, we're, we're cutting it very, very close here. Uh, the Orbot Swap, about level 42. Right, we allocate this node just to make it stay level 42 because otherwise it, it goes wonky, you know, going backwards. Um, um, pretty straightforward, yeah. right? Cut list for Smite, give you something to attack with. This is just something to give accuracy rating because it feels nice. You don't actually need it per se, right? Yeah, it doesn't need to be a cutlass, right? It's just a base, a melee weapon, which you need for smite. It happens to attack really fast. It has a good base attack speed. It has some accuracy rating. Any melee weapon will do, right? Yeah, and this is where we switch over to using Stormblast Mine as a support skill. Make sure to de-level it to level 1 so it doesn't reserve hardly any mana, right? And you just throw, throw them down for the damage taken to increase debuff on enemies. You know, with the mastery so they can't die, it's just a permanent ramping you know, up to like a hundred and something percent increased damage taken on enemies. This is when you right. where you start to like pull your own weight as an aura bot. You know, you get might, you get your damage aura. Uh, oh, the wave of conviction tech is really cool. Um, shouldn't there be uh, uh, overshock no, support? No, there should not be. That oh. is on the spark leveling. Build. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's on the spark carry, so it's not on this one. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, still, you're going to be using wave of conviction and a curse applied by it to uh, just. Yeah, Again, like make yourself useful before you've got all your auras online, right? You're still going to be granting spite, you're still going to be cursing, applying exposure, and using the mines, as Halo mentioned, so you can uh, feel pretty good about yourself, even as you swap to an aura bot at level 42. After that, you essentially just go and fill out the melding wheel, and then you grab uh, charisma, and you grab your influence at the top of the tree, and then you're pretty much just picking up energy shield and life nodes, um, which you're going to want. By the time you're mapping, you get ghost dance because grace is the uh, second aura, second 50% aura that you run. Ghost dance has no downside. Uh, it's going to be incredibly strong recovery early on, right? It allows you to just kind of run through packs, take no damage. As long as you allocate um, it. As long as you allocate it, but, but no one would ever forget to allocate ghost dance for an entire league. <laughs> we uh let's not let's not dwell on that all right so um before we get into early mapping is when you start to pick up your actual orobot items let's uh swap over to the spark tree just to cover that real quick so it's all leveling together in one place yeah um now this the spark setup goes all the way up to white maps you can play as a completely so character solo character we actually did testing with this it felt just fine you know w without using one crafts of the lightning mastery um so if you like want to level an Orobot solo later in the league, you know, and then just like jump into five ways and you don't have to play with anybody at all, or you plan on doing like more zone splitting with your character, or you just want to play or, a spark for a while you know, maybe longer your carry Orobot just transition falls later. On league start and Couldn't you have be. to Couldn't play multiple me. hours without them. Yeah. But uh it's a it's a completely... That's another thing that would never happen, right? No, no, surely, surely not. <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah, it's a completely separate tree. Uh yeah, same um, thing you path, Ash Frost right. and Storm. You go up with this, this one. You want to go Templar start first. Uh, Orb of Storm Stormblast Mine hits so frequently that Elemental Overload is essentially always up. It's always forty percent more damage, right? Um, with Spark, however, you don't quite get that instantly. Um, so instead, we path to Templar start first, take the Life Wheel, and then path up to EO. Um, EO is still a really powerful Keystone, right? It's just not quite as high priority as all of the amazing things that you get from the Templar start. Yeah, the... Um, you notice we're taking Crackling Speed and moving into the Witch area here because the build is... Uh, because, well, one, these nodes are really good for Spark. Um, being able to make use of the spell damage and the cast speed, which Stormblast Mine can't, makes these nodes incredibly good. And 
as the build is meant to be played, uh, not meant to be played, right, but can be played all the way through white maps, we're going to be investing more points into damage. And this is unlike the Stormblast Mine build that more or less didn't need any regret orbs. Um, this build, depending on where you swap out of it, is actually going to require, to fully swap to an Orobot, is going to require you to either be overleveled more than you otherwise would be, or to eventually buy Regret Orbs. If you go all the way to White Maps, um, and all the way to level 79, I think, where the tree ends, you're going to need about 15 to 20 Regret Orbs. Um, at the end, and if you're continue, if you're playing with a duo at that point, uh, you should be able to get those no problem, right? After a little bit of farming, um, if you're playing by yourself, you can do heist, you can do low tier maps. Uh, maybe it's later in the league and you got some currency, but this is a great, great leveling tree to get yourself uh, all the way through the campaign and potentially a little bit further. Um, while still maintaining sort of the basic shape of an Ourobot tree so that it's, it is respectable, even if it costs ultimately 10 to 15 regret orbs. Yeah, and this is where I want to make sure everybody knows about the path of building compare feature, uh, because you can select your build, check the compare box, select the one you want to transition to, and it'll show all the nodes you need to unspec in red and all the nodes you need to select in green. It's an extremely useful tool. Just want to like make more people aware of this. So. Yeah, this is, you can see it like it follows the tree that the Orobot's going to be in the end. Yeah. All right, so we want to go... It's a great feature. Um, go on to point the... out a couple of things uh, in this yeah. build. In the... So going to the skills, we use... Um... So we used Wave of Conviction in the Stormblast Mine build, right? In this character, if you go back to the level 39 and 54 sections, um, there's a good number, a good portion of the campaign where you're actually going to be using over, overcharge support, um, pair it with, you know, wave of, uh, wave of conviction. And essentially, wave of conviction is a button you already want to be pressing to apply exposure. It also happens to have incredibly high base damage. And so you can use that, uh, in combination with converting its damage to lightning, right? Which you want to do anyway for the exposure. Oh, man. You can use that in combination with overcharge support to actually get really good shocks. Uh, much more than you otherwise would. I remember as I was testing it, I went, uh, it was like Act 7 or so, I just hovered over the tooltip and like a level, an underleveled wave of conviction that I had just grabbed from the Act 2 vendor um, was dealing more damage per hit than Spark, and it was shocking as if dealing 600% more damage. Uh, so this is a great button to use early on. By the time you get to maps, the damage falls off a little bit and you take a... Uh, you instead use just the normal setup where you use Hextouch support and use it to apply conductivity as well. Um, but it's a, a pretty cool tech. It gives you pretty much like 40 to 50% shocks even on the end, uh, like the act bosses, when you're using the overcharge support with it. Yeah, uh, the man does love his wave of conviction based in. I certainly do. If you uh, ever look at uh, his Twitch icon, it's the wave of conviction gem art. All right, and then right. last thing to mention with the uh, the leveling, spark leveling. Yeah. If you go back to the last tree, we do use a cluster jewel here. Oh, this right, is right. something you can even do on the spark yeah. carry, actually, because uh, this node is so good, the node being streamlined. Essentially, you path up to the top left, uh, and you're going to use this cluster jewel. We only need it for the notable, which means that we can afford to use a six passive, a five passive, doesn't matter. Eye level also doesn't matter. Whatever is cheapest, you just buy a projectile damage medium cluster. Literally a throw chaos. 10 alterations. Yeah. Literally 10 alterations on it, and you're going to get streamlined on average. This is a really big node. Uh, the increased damage is pretty good, but also it is one of our few sources of prog speed, which are what makes Spark feel absolutely amazing and really push it over the top. So you want to be looking out for this when you've got a chaos or two. You'll buy, like, crew reward, and then if you drop another chaos or two, you can buy this. Yeah, you can also look for Winds of Change as a alternate option. It's People don't usually put it in guides and stuff, um, but a pair of gloves that gives a bunch of proj speed and proj damage too. I really like them. Yeah, they uh, drop from lab. They're they're pretty crazy. Uh, okay, yeah. They on... usually cost more like 4 or 5 chaos, but they... It depends. Could be more this it's, league. It, it yeah. fluctuates. Mostly it depends on how early you are, how fast you are in the campaign. Um, um, yeah, what about uh, the early mapping version? 
<clears throat> All right, so early mapping is... Early mapping can sort of be one of the pain points of, of an aura bot. Um, for further priority here, or it otherwise would be if you did not have Ghost Rithe, right? Um, Ghost Rithe is, after you get into maps, your number one priority. Um, this item is absurd. Because we've already taken life nodes and energy shield nodes on the tree, what it does is it allows you to be an energy shield based character while also making use of all of the life nodes you've taken so far, um, while also giving you chaos res to protect against your chaos, uh, chaos damage, right? It's not like it makes you a low life character, it just essentially makes every character tankier. You go from a uh, thousand, you go from 1700 life and a good amount of energy shield, you equip it, and you you go to 4300 HP, right? And it only goes up from there as you take the um, all of the energy shield masteries, right, around the tree. Yeah. Or not masteries, but energy shield nodes, which will now be applying to your, your total HP pool. And you get chaos um, It's res. like a one chaos item. It's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it feels feels really good to level. See that big energy shield bar like over the life bar, especially early on, it always feels Yeah, really right. Nice. That art is so satisfying. You also get chaos res off like the asylum wheel, and uh, the 10% of armor damage applies to chaos damage from hits mastery yeah that that know. note is crazy right there it's, it essentially in combination with having just a bit of chaos res makes you means so that you're never going to die to chaos damage ever right like if you imagine you know the jug node that is really valuable unbreakable which causes a little bit of your armor to apply to elemental damage this mastery just a mastery is actually uh 10%, right? It's, it's higher numerical value than Jug's 8% of armor applies. No. Um, now, it's not applying to elemental damage, right? It's just chaos, but... And you might not it, have... It uh, makes it so that you you are incredibly yeah. tanky against chaos damage. And you might not have armor yet at this point in the build if you're not quite running determination as you get as you add it in the next progression stage, but you can always just use a granite flask and it'll yeah. still be well worth it. Like you, even, yeah. even having a granite flask on this makes, makes, uh, makes a big difference. And... We also have the, uh, well, we've instituted the mid-mapping version, which allows you to sort of get determination going really early on, right? This is like a transitional thing to help uh, help you figure out what to prioritize going in between early mapping and the late mapping, and it, it'll, uh, it'll have a gem setup that allows you to get determination going really fast, right? Um, yeah. Now, um, before... Also, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, you, okay, you were saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, before the carry would run the lightning damage with non-crits as lucky mastery, uh, now that that doesn't exist, there's no reason you can't just slap a Perkle's Toe on the Aurobot character as soon as you can buy one. Um, you can even run this earlier, I think. This is uh, like a 1C item, and it gives your carry 30% more damage. So it's uh, pretty crazy because the range of lightning rolling twice with lucky feels really good. And then Sign of the Sin Eater is your best damage item in the, in the entire game. Level 30 Smite is basically 70 to 80% more damage for your carry. If they have a level 20 Spark Gem, if they have a lower level gem, that'll be even higher, right? Because the ratio of base damage that Sign gives is, is much crazier. Bated Breath, just a right. piss cheap. It, it's an elk. Belt. You put it on, yeah. it, it complements Ghost Rithe very well, right? Yeah. Uh,. All right, so going on to the mid-mapping version, here we use Coruscating Elixir uh, that allows us to instantly reserve determination on our life bar. This is one of the first things you want to do after you get the four items mentioned in early mapping. Next up is getting your Coruscating. Um, it immediately has 97% uptime. Like, you're not going to have to worry about uh, running out of flask charges or anything. We'll get into that more a little bit later when we discuss flasks in the other versions. but. Um, yeah, you, you want to get that uh, immediately. There's a couple of cards for it, div cards called the Dragon, which allow you to save a couple of Chaos if you buy them one by one and piece it together. Allows you to get a little, a little bit faster. Chuck on a Determination just gives you and your carry 20,000 armor. You don't have to worry about physical damage until red maps from there. Now, this is also the first version to use a Divine Blessing setup. Previously, you had to wait all the way until the uh, 800C or uh, what we now call the budget endgame version, right? Um, Divine 
blessing is the the button that allows you to 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 spend mana for an aura and when you reduce its mana cost all the way to zero it is essentially a free aura previously that was gated behind the 800c version and it was also gated behind well well two other things even it was gated behind having the reduced mana cost of skills during flask effect craft which uh you can only acquire by unveiling a cinder swallow commonly cinder swallow urn this drops from the uh, betrayal boss Katarina. <clears throat> so what this meant is that like you would have to wait until people max out their safe houses, farm Katarina, drop the flask, and then you either buy it from trade yourself, which is quite expensive early on, unveil it and hope you get the the modifier, or you would have to gather up a bunch of uh, scours and baubles and then go buy it from someone else, right? Now, later on in the league, and when you have more money, this isn't that much of a hassle, which is why we do use that mod, the Utility Flask mod, on the later versions, because of course it lets you get a Utility Flask. Um, but early on, you can actually just use a Mana Flask. What you're going to do is you're going... Mana Flasks can naturally roll a reduced mana cost to skill suffix, right? What you're going to do to get this is you get a like item level 65 or so, um, just as you're coming out of the campaign. Uh, in eternal mana flask, and then you're just going to alt aug spam it. You need about 150, I believe, alterations to get both the prefix and a suffix that is at least like 16% reduced mana cost or so. Um, note that if you roll a higher mana cost, good for you. If you roll on the lower end, you can supplement that with a jewel. Uh, jewels in the game can roll like base jewels it is, not abyss or anything like that, can roll reduced mana cost of skills. As far as that, if that's the only stat that you're looking for on the jewel, they're like a chaos, there's a million of them on trade. Um, yeah, so essentially you can use this, you can use cobalt jewels. Uh, it's not just cobalt jewels, it's, it's all the jewel types, I believe, but you can use mana cost jewels to help supplement your flask if you got a bad roll, right? Um, but you want the mana cost suffix and the enduring prefix. The enduring prefix allows the flask to continue uh, through its entire duration when it otherwise would fill up instantly. Um, you'll note that when you equip the flask, it immediately has 100% uptime. Uh, mana flasks use very little mana, and this means that you have 100% uptime on your Divine Blessing, uh, which I believe we use haste out of the gate. And yeah. Uh, because of this this tech using the the mana flask, you're going to be able to use fit in a haste into your build at absolutely no cost to reservation. One thing you can do that's really cheap is anoint righteous decree. Gives you six percent reduced mana cost of skills for two sepia oils and a teal. It costs absolutely nothing, and is uh, yeah, just might as well. It makes it easier to get the the uh, uh, the blessing yep. on haste going. All right. I um, think that was, yeah, the, yeah the... the important parts for the mid-mapping. Now going to late mapping, this is the first version where we have all of the items and all of the uh, gems socketed. That is to say, like, everything is filled up, right? The previous versions, you're just going to be supplementing it with rares. You don't have that many gems here, sockets don't matter. Um, in the late mapping version, there's a little bit more nuance with uh, links, you're using a Victarios, you're using Alpha's Howl, things like that. Um, some of these items are a little bit hard to color. A lot of the time you're going to run into a problem where you use, you want a lot of red sockets, but a lot of your gear is um, favors rolling green sockets, right, with a high dex requirement. So we've gone through and updated all of the, uh, the gear sockets. You'll note when you hover over an item, it has the exact links and colors that you'll need. Um, that was the case last time, however, this time we've actually reorganized the sockets to make it a little bit easier to roll them, right? Um, last time you needed like a triple red on the Alpha's Howl, which actually costs you 125 chromatic orbs. Um, the very first league we instituted that, it wasn't that costly, but recent leagues, chromatics have actually been pretty expensive day one. Um, and so now when you put together the late mapping version, you're not going to have to spend more than 25 chromes, I think, uh, on bench recipes to color any of the gear. It'll feel a lot better. Um, yeah. So just make sure you follow the, 
uh, the sockets, where things are socketed in the build. If you go to skills real quick, all the versions from here on out, we have colored and socketed items like we just showed. And then we also have the skills grouped up. So it's going to be body armor displayed first, then things in the helmet, the gloves, the boots, and then finally the weapons, right? Your weapon and your shield. Um, and that's just uh, helps for convenience to easily determine where things are socketed. Yeah, this version is drastically improved all around, and it's still crazy ethical. Like, look at this ring. You can buy a better ring with, like, energy shield, you know, or even better roll on the strength. You, for, like, a chaos, you know, it's not not particularly hard to do. So these uh, these items aren't crazy or hard to achieve by any means. Yeah. Um, one thing to point out is we actually use a mana reservation efficiency jewel here. Um... Yeah, just remember to look out for it. It's it's not it's a it's a very valuable stat for us, right? But again, as long as you're not trying to get other stats on the same jewel, um, because there are so many rare jewels floating around from quest rewards, because people list everything on League Start, um, there are a lot of these available. This version uses a one three percent. Just watch out for them on future builds. Some jewels, such as uh, like energy shield and intelligence are replaceable. If you miss one of those jewels, you're only going to be missing out on a little bit of energy shield, right? Not to say they're not important, but other jewels such as the reduced mana cost or reservation are the ones that you're going to want to make sure you get first to get your auras going. Um, the last thing I want to point out for the, the late mapping version is the flask setup. Um, here we use the, uh, we still use a mana flask here, um, but because we don't have our purities on yet, right, the elemental purities that we have in later versions, we still need Ellie res, right, as a character, um, and so what we do to achieve that is we run one Coruscating Elixir, which has 100% uptime, as a ruby flask gives us 55 res, and then we run either a Topaz or a Bismuth flask of resistance right with a resistance suffix if you get an increased duration prefix on it you're going to have a hundred percent uptime and we can use these two to act as mini purities causing us to take less elemental damage right um the elemental flasks are actually really powerful they do give you ellie res but again they're also 20 percent less of that element taken um, this version makes use of two elemental flasks a lot of the later versions actually run all three um yeah, so just watch out for that. If you're ever wondering why your resistances aren't capped, it's likely that you forgot to have an elemental res flask suffix or something. Um, because we actually take the flask wheel on the tree, in addition with the Pathfinder Ascendancy on this version, it means you're going to be having 100% or nearly 100% uptime on all of these flasks. Ellie flasks, very good. Uh, let's see. There was one other thing we wanted to talk about this version, but I don't remember what it was. Can't have been that important. Oh, you were talking about how to craft these items like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, we very spent, ethical. Like, I spent like three hours in Craft of Exile the other day looking at, um, at crafting gloves and helmets, and I just wanted to... Um, there, it turns out there's a lot of methods that are practically identical cost efficiency-wise. Um, you're going to see in the, this version the next version, there's like pure energy shield gloves, pure energy shield helmet, where really the only thing that matters is a bunch of energy shield and intelligence. Previous versions used like spell suppress and dex and loathing essences. Um, for crafting this pure energy shield gear, it's very simple. You can either use a spite essence, which gives intelligence, spam that until you get like flat energy shield and then craft increased, or spam until you get a high tier of increased energy shield and craft flat energy shield. You want to always do the corresponding one. This gear is incredibly easy to craft. This takes on average, I think, like eight essences or yeah, something like that. You can also just buy um, some too. It's, yeah. it's an option. But don't underestimate yeah, intelligence is, as an is the ES source. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, don't, un right. don't underestimate intelligence as a source of energy shield. It's a very common mistake you see a lot of people make. Yeah, like um, you see the, like the 400, 10, 10 energy, or 10 intelligence is 2 energy shield, right? It's like when you just travel around the passive tree and accumulate 400, uh, 400 intelligence, that's actually 80% increased energy shield, right? 
um, using an essence on gloves. You might think of for big energy shield items like crusader mods that give you 10% increased energy shield. Looks really cool, right? That's still the same as 50 intelligence also gives you energy shield. And that's the reason why a lot of these items uh, you can craft using woe, but in, in the POB you'll see some of them, a good amount, are crafted with spite essences that give int. Um, but yeah, this method works, uh, essence crafting works for a lot of the items, energy shield items you're going to see later on, such as this helmet or these gloves. And again, they're all made to be craftable, typically with essences, but realistically, you're probably going to get uh, cheaper deals just buying them on trade because of the nature of League Start, where people just list just about everything they find, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Before, before we go to the budget in-game setup, how does it feel to run Soul Link on the uh, late mapping version? Because some um, people have had like mixed is... feelings about it. So the new late mapping version is a good bit tankier than it previously was. Um, I think the key to feeling good about Soul Link is don't ignore your energy shield sources. That's your rare jewels, your cluster jewels, having a well rolled Sintrek, things like that. Um, I want to just. Make sure, uh, that, like, to have the best Soul Link experience, because it it causes you to take some of the damage that your carry takes. Now, it massively increases their AHP. Just pressing a level 20 Soul Link on your carry gives them effectively 65% more, uh, more EHP. Um, but it does redirect some of the damage to you, right? So I think the key to having good Soul Link uh, experience is don't run it too early, and... Pay attention to to your own defenses, right? Like you'll by by being able to run by paying attention to your own defense, you're able to run Soul Link, and you make your carry even tankier. Um, so you don't want to neglect any energy shield. I would say absolutely don't run Soul Link before you have determination and before you have a bit of energy shield built up. Um, but around the time you get to the late mapping version, Soul Link is a pretty crazy button, and from here on out, the build gets so tanky that you're not really going to notice the the damage being redirected a, to you. As a carry afterwards. build enjoyer, I do love the soul link. I, I I do love this thing, you know. I imagine it's infuriating dying randomly. It is right. I'm no like you know what you know what's really infuriating is when I like work hard, I get triple Ellie flasks, fifty thousand armor, fifty thousand evasion, spell suppress, you know, sixty four hundred energy shield, and or I know that you're privilege. here just because I press soul link on you. Like <laughs> come on. Broken no, but, skill, uh, actually. Uh, okay, True. budget in game massively improved. Doesn't need a third reservation efficiency, a small cluster or a large cluster at all. Um, yeah, tell uh, tell uh, us about the the yeah. budget in game version, the old two hundred C setup. I thought you were just going to start going there, but uh, I could, I can, I can. The, uh, there's this is one of the versions that got buffed the most from the um, the changes. The, the mastery changes, that is. I think uh, one thing to look at on the passive tree, there are two key masteries here. Um, one of them is the spell suppress is lucky mastery, which should be taken. Yeah, it got it. untaken at the very very start of this recording. 25% um, spell suppress on a is single point. 25% like... spell suppress, right? What it does is you when you get hit by spell damage, the game checks to see if you suppress it. If you didn't, when you have this mastery, it'll just check again. Yeah. Right? Advantage like if the you old play diamond D &D. flask is lucky, That's what the lightning damage is lucky, yeah. etc. Um and so instead of spending a lot of uh passive points and also spending energy shield, right? Previously you would use um hybrid gloves, you'd use dexterity intelligence gloves that is evasion energy shield, and then roll uh, spell suppress on them and things like that to make use of the old mastery, etc., etc. Um, now, because this mastery is so crazy, spell suppress is lucky. Instead of getting a hundred percent spell suppress capped, we get ninety percent or so spell suppress capped with it, and then you just have another fourteen hundred energy shield by wearing pure uh, pure energy shield gear yeah, instead the... of hybrid gear, and also taking the Helmet mastery on the tree that gives 100% increased uh, energy shield from your helmet, which makes just makes this combo even even more appealing to run. Yeah, the old build, like the old Orobot equivalent of this, like the 800C setup, really relied on spell suppress. You sacrificed a lot to cap it out. Uh, whereas this, that every time I we did a review of somebody who was like, I'm playing the Orobot and I'm feeling squishy. What am I doing wrong? They always didn't have spell suppress on their gear. 
Well, now you don't actually really need it. You uh, you can just get power elsewhere and be much more tanky overall. Uh, this mastery is really insane. We 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 love the lucky spell suppress mastery here. Triple uh, Ellie right. Flask Gaming too. You know you love yeah. to see it. The uh... oh um one thing to note on this version and actually the late mapping version is the rare jewels. Um... This is, I think, the one thing that you have to pay attention to a little bit more closely than on the previous version last patch. We've incorporated a couple of jewels that make a difference to how your skills actually function, right? Remember the reservation jewel on the version before this and the reduced mana cost of skills version. Everything from budget end game up is going to use another jewel that has uh, the key to this jewel is just the implicit. It's a corrupted implicit. And unlike the explicit mod um, on the other jewel that gives 3% increased mana reservation efficiency, this one gives 2% increased generic reservation efficiency. Um, what that means is, yes, it applies to your mana, but it also applies to your life. Without having this extra 2%, you actually cannot reserve Defiance banner on your life bar using Arrogance. Um, and so you need to have this jewel to actually be able to just get that last 2% of reservation you need to get Defiance Banner on your life bar and have all of your auras working. Um, so just make sure not to neglect that. It's not hard to get. It's just a corrupted implicit with uh, people running Abyss, people volling jewels, certain, you know, vol side areas, dropping corrupted items, etc. This is really easy to find. This one is uh, an Abyss jewel with an energy shield implicit. It does not have to be an Abyss Jewel. It doesn't even have to have any Energy Shield on it, right? The Implicit is what matters, but uh, I do predict that with a lot of people running Breach, um, or Breach, sorry, a lot of people running Abyss, Abyss yeah. and taking the Corrupted Jewels, Abyss Jewels drop Corrupted node, these are going to be pretty plentiful yeah. um, to, to be able to also get Energy Shield on them. Yeah, just, just the Reservation Efficiency. Any Jewel can roll it. Uh, let's see, right. what else... Yeah, even uh, corrupted unique jewels can roll them. That's that's usually the the cheapest ones you'll find for like an alk or actually yeah. corrupted unique jewels. You don't need a um, a, a loathing essence in the helmet anymore. The mana reservation implicit. I think it's like forty eldritch ickers on uh, average to hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it was. We looked it up the other day. Same thing. Very ethical gloves. Uh, but yeah, this build should be much better. This version especially should be feel much much better to play. Uh, anything before we move on to the end game setup? Um, I well, this is the I believe this is the first version that uses a uh, uh, mana flask. Yeah, a, a, a yeah. magic flask with the craft on it, right? So at this point, you want to find someone who can craft it for you. Um, you can check TFT, or you can also ask on our Discord. Yeah, there's a whole channel for it for people sharing the mana flask craft. Also, you can you can uh, just buy Cinder Swallows and unveil them. Especially at League Start, they're surprisingly cheap, often like 5 or 10 chaos each. You know, I've seen people, you know, I wasn't in the Discord, they, you know, waited like hours to get the Mana Flask craft. They could have just spent like 5 or 10 chaos on average to unveil it themselves. So you can you can check the uh, price of Cinder Swallows. Yeah, and then if you get it, you can share it with other people too. on day know? one, two, and then drop off really fast after that. Yeah. All um, right. But yeah, just note that. And then one, one thing to point out that's just... A massive improvement is if you look at that flask, there is no enkindling orb on it. It yes. has 100% uptime. It is reused at the end of this flask's effect. We no longer have this like remembering to press your flask before you divine blessing, having to deal with the uh, no flask jerks gained downside of enkindling orbs. Um, from here on out, every build, you can just have your flasks running from the start of the map and press your divine blessing whenever you want. You can see we have 25 unreserved mana and 23 mana cost. Now this does factor in the storm blast mines, right? Uh, it should be done. Yeah, that is 18, 18 mines on the ground. So, you know, this is like the lowest max mana you can ever get, uh, assuming you have the exact setup, right? So. Right. And if you're ever in a situation where uh, you feel like you really can't change out any of your gear to get reduced mana cost or you are uh, got a lot of currency, but you're really low level. Worst case scenario, what you can do is you can craft on your ring, um, a as long as you've unveiled a couple of rings or know somebody who has a craft, you can just go and craft the prefix. Uh, it is mana and reduced mana cost of skills. It gives you 5%, right? And that's going to more than make up for any small deficits that you have as, yeah. far, as, as far as the mana cost go. But they have, um, if you do just duplicate the POB, 
you're the right character level, as Halo pointed out. They've all been uh, they've all been been designed to have enough mana open. Another thing you can do is just like lower the level on your clarity one time or two times or whatever um, to get your get enough mana to cast your blessing. All right, on to the end game, the old 2000C setup. All right, so this version uh, is the first one to use a Timeless Jewel. Um, normally, that is. Maybe we'll talk about the touch back on the other Timeless Jewels later. But um, yeah, this uses a Militant Faith with the modifier in, uh, increased aura effect per 10 devotion. How this works is you socket it in. All of the notables that you allocate around uh, around it, even small passives that don't visually change, give you devotion. Um, that devotion gets turned into aura effect or whatever else is listed on the jewel. Um, this one also has, I think, defenses from shield. That's not important. Just get one with aura effect. Um, the other important thing is that the number here, when you see it is, it has the number 6,000 on it, carved to glorify 6,000 new faithful, blah, blah, blah. Um, the name also doesn't matter since we're not taking any keystones. That's What that 6,000 does is that it actually determines which notables, if any, get turned into uh, militant faith-specific notables. So what can happen, actually, is that if you get an unlucky seed, um, the militant faith can turn one of the more crucial notables for the build that's like reflexes, spell suppress, is the spell suppress, or leadership, which gives you aura effect or foresight your energy shield wheel um these things can get turned into the timeless jewel nodes which can occasionally be all right but you definitely don't want to be replacing any of your key notables um this is determined by the seed and it can be a little bit hard to shop for these essentially when you look up a militant faith with aura effect what you're commonly going to find on trade is that the first one that you buy when you plug it into pob you can just paste the item in the item section test it in your character um it'll show you this is what you're going to find essentially yes. if you're if you're looking at the lowest aura, listings for uh militant faith aura effect militant faiths are uh, one of those hot potato items like um 50 move speed boots I just said this. The uh, name. We are very, well, now very I've tired. Forgotten. Seven league step. Uh, yes, you know the boot with the boot enchant. Yeah, you know, yeah. you run through lab, you just slap it on. You know, or you accidentally bind with an enchant and you can't level a character with it. Or like resolute technique cause freeze. They just get passed around. The lowest ones will basically all be bricks. But there's a tool in the description made by someone from the Discord, uh, Liberator. Very, very uh, awesomely made a tool that pulls like the top, I think, like, one or two hundred um, militant faiths filters for ones that have that don't break your notable and then gives you a trade link. So you'll be able to click the link in the description. It'll pull up a list of militant faiths that shouldn't break any of your important notables. Still double-check if you, you know, want to make sure, but that should be an enormously helpful tool to help you not spend a bunch of time checking them one by one by one, you know. Right. Uh, well, we mentioned it. There's uh, another tool in the Discord. Um, not needed for anything in the guide, but if you ever want to check your character's aura stats quickly, like what your aura effect is on all of your auras, see if you're missing a breakpoint or anything like that. In the Discord, in the useful resources section, we have a tool, uh, poecalc.fly, and you can input, uh, just go there, import your character's your account and your character, and it'll give you all of your relevant aura stats so that you can either see what you're giving your carry or you can see if you're missing any breakpoints or anything like that yeah just enter yep and then you can yeah import it right in it's a very very awesome tool so special thanks to them for uh, helping make aura bots easier to easier to play all right what do we got next uh the plus two you you want to get your purities to level 23 you can see down here you know you want gym level 21 and it gets plus two from the item you get one purity in Prism Guardian, which gives it plus two aura gems. You have two options for how you want to get the other plus two. One option is to use plus two AoE murder mitts. These should be familiar to anyone who played the previous Orobot version. You craft these by rolling Eldritch Chaos Orbs until you get the socketed AoE gems prefix. Um, it doesn't take too many times. I think like seven or eight Eldritch Chaos, or I mean Veiled Chaos on average. Maybe, maybe less. And so you, you hope to get it with good prefixes. If you don't get it with good prefixes, you hope to get it with good suffixes. You can use Eldritch Currency. So like if you Veiled Chaos until you get some Energy Shield, 
Then you can craft Energy Shield, use Eldritch Chaos until you get like a res or a spell suppress. It should be like 80 to 100 Chaos tops to get like a pair of gloves that's better than this, not counting rolling for the spell suppress damage implicit, because that's its own thing. Or you can get plus two AoE Centrex. Now, we evolved like, or I, I evolved like what, like 150 Centrex this league? Um, Something like that. Tons of them. This item just drops like crazy. People evolve them. Uh, getting plus two AoE Centrex or plus two Aura Centrex is actually way cheaper than you would have thought. So just check, see what looks like it'll be more viable. Um, both are fine options. You just switch the links, you know, switch the gem sockets, you know, switch gloves and boots, gl boots and gloves if you end up getting your plus two AoE here instead of ungloves. Um, yeah. So actually, one thing to mention there real quick, if you do swap those sockets around, you're going to be trying to get four off colors on the Syntrex. Syntrex, despite having Energy Shield on them, that's just a unique mod. They're actually a pure dexterity base, meaning they have a very strong proclivity for rolling green sockets. However, if you're getting corrupted Syntrex, you can actually use tainted orbs, tainted chromatic orbs on them. And what that does is it reforges the sockets um, without caring about uh, the item's attribute requirements, the dex, right? And so you can use those tainted uh, tainted chromatics to make rolling the swapping your colors around a little bit easier. Tainted currency is very fun. Now that it, it got unnerfed, man, that was that was sad. <laughs> Remember, like, everyone was so excited to use fusings, and it was just, like, <laughs> man, that was something else. That was, yeah. Uh, okay. Don't worry, they're they're broken right now. Yeah, that they're was, very uh, very strong. That was what was that a Kalandra special? That was a Kalandra special. Yet another Kalandra special. Yet another Kalandra special, oh, man. man. That league. Okay, okay, that's a that's a tangent. We ought not uh, what not go down. Ought not go down. Ought not go down. God damn, am, am I tired? Okay, maximum mana is clarity. Watcher's eye feels really good. You know, this is just a cool mod. It's a yeah, bunch of you can also get 50. like flat chance to evade. You can get. Fizz that reduction one's really under termination. Um, we have a uh, yeah. I know you do love your your flat evade watchers. Eyes. People don't realize um, it's it's a more multiplier on your chance to evade, which is insane. If you have eighty, you yeah, know, if like you have eighty five chance to evade, you tier. get like, you know, yeah, um, eighty nine. You can get you know six percent on a watcher's eye. That's like min roll, by the way. You you can get all the way up to eight percent. But you see here, we have eighty nine percent chance to evade. The maximum you can have in the game on chance to evade is 95 percent and what this means is right now we're avoiding less than one in every 10 attacks um like we get we get we'll get hit by one in every 10 attacks right if we get a watcher's eye with flat evade chance and we go up to 95 percent evade chance we're now evading one in every 20 attacks so that, that's twice as much evasion rating essentially that's twice the evasion per evade <laughs> twice the evade for but, evasion um, maybe that's a better better way to put it indeed okay but uh yeah there's in the trading folders there's a uh a timeless timeless tool there's a watcher's eye filter where i have filtered for watcher's eyes with essentially all of the mods that you may find useful on an aura bot um in the count part you can set the count to one two or three to figure out how many uh what that does is it filters if you set it at one it'll filter for any timeless any watcher's eye with at least with one, one of, the of these mods, mods. Yeah. um if you're going to a higher investment version you might want to set it at two to check out uh more expensive watcher's eyes that might have multiple mods that you want on them all right and that's about it i think we covered it covered it pretty thoroughly um yeah so uh just to touch on the timeless jewel variants down at the bottom the timeless jewel demos um i think we talked the... about them earlier yeah, we did. Um, yeah. I just want to say the 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 place where you would use this is um, after you've fully constructed the 800C version, the budget uh, that, or that is the budget end game version. Um, then there's going to be a while where you're saving up currency. Um, during that time, you can go for one of these cheap brutal restraints, and that'll give you 16% aura effect, which gets you all the way. I mean, 16% aura effect, right? That's actually that's a, a larger increase than like getting a synthesized helm in a later version is, um, which is something we'll need to talk about actually before we move on. Oh yes. Um, and uh, yeah, and it, it's pretty cheap, right? As Halo mentioned, these brutal restraints are very inexpensive. We have two two trees here. One shows an example of what to do socketing at the middle, one at the side. Um, they each uh, unallocate a couple of points, like I think purity of flesh. Um, so th this gives you an idea of what to do with these brutal restraints that we have in the trading folders. 
and what to do if you don't have quite enough points to use them. Yeah, very, or use them otherwise. Very nice. Okay. So, um, this is where we are a bird eating a worm. We're a bird now. High investment end game. This is a version that didn't exist on the old, uh, the old POB, new one that we've added. So, um, if you go to the item section real quick, uh, one oh. thing I want to touch on in the end game and high investment end game version, the synth, the synth incident, as we called it, is in reference to this helm. Essentially, synthesized helmets can drop with the implicit. Um, the synthesized implicit 15%, it's actually a roll, it rolls between 10 and 15, but you just bless orbit. 15% increased effective non-curse auras from your skills. Um, these helmets are an incredible power spike for aura bots, and they used to be relatively plentiful, um, at least not as scarce as they are now, in, once again, uh, no, actually, not a Kalongjur incident, last league, they removed the... Uh, atlas nodes that cause synthesized maps to drop a ton of synthesized items. Previously, you'd be able to run through a cortex or a distant memory or what have you and drop 20 to 50 synthesized items on the ground. Those nodes are entirely gone. Synthesized maps drop very few items, and these synthesized or effect helms are incredibly expensive. Um, because they're sort of aura related, the energy shield helmets are the most expensive, followed by like energy shield evasion hybrid, then evasion, so on and so forth. So what this endgame version is doing, it is using the absolute bottom of the barrel, cheapest, worst case scenario for the aura effect helm. This is like the fourth tier of armor bases. Yeah, something, right. So uh... this just goes to show that you don't need um you don't need anything special for your helmet. What I've done here is used a, a woe essence, yeah. or no, a uh, you can even use loathing. a, a woe essence, yeah, or loathing. a loathing, loathing, loathing. I skipped over that mod entirely. Yeah, this is a loathing essence to give you mana reservation, and then it has just crafted evasion rating. You, the reason uh... you craft evasion rating on it, as opposed to energy shield, is to meet the requirement for the uh, the evasion mastery that we take that gives us 15% spell suppress, which is taken in this version the one i'm working at is a little bit crankled this it, is a separate fork of it well, we're using no 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 it. it's a uh the tree is I, I think your tree is on high investment end game ah yes yeah that's uh that'll do it too yeah. and, uh, the failure to sync common mistake that um yeah you just <laughs> make, make sure you're living in these synced, guys living in these pobs and it still uh, still happens uh, yeah, so you can see, like, this is actually just a pure strength helmet. Like you said, the, the evasion rating lets it yep. count for the mastery. Uh, oh, the, wanted to mention, you can actually roll intelligence on, like, strength and evasion helmet bases. Yes. You know, a lot of bases, the attribute type is specific to the base type. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to make a note of that, because that's yep. something you might not know. Like, uh, gloves can roll, any type of gloves can roll dex, any type of helmet can roll int, so on and yep. so forth. Any type of belt rolls strength yeah it, it might I, actually be separate I'm belt not. is only strength um, it, it no belt can roll other attributes you gotta like uh like the omni I mean, belts they all yeah i guess so they all use the, well i mean no um, no gloves can roll uh i guess so right like int gloves can run can roll int as well as dex and um, anyway right, um but yeah moving on again. here um we are sort of just getting a tankier and getting more we, we use the items to get tankier, and then we use the passive tree to spend that tankiness to get more aura effect. So um, what we've got going here is we actually use the Scion's ability to path down from the uh, the duelist start right here, because we, we took path of the duelist all those, all those levels ago. Um, and we're using it here to path around and take the champion of the cause cluster. This allows us to actually allocate it manually and then anoint charisma, which saves us some passive points on the right. These small nodes are actually really good here. Um, because aura effect is such a limited stat, being able to take the small node at the very start of the tree actually is quite a big power boost. And then you, uh, again, you get reservation as well. You get champion of the cause. You anoint charisma, saves you an additional three points. Um, yeah, the another thing this version of the build does is it still uses a militant faith, but it gets even more value out of it two ways. One, the militant faith is a two mod now. Um, it is giving us increased effective non curse auras per 10 devotion. It's also giving us 1% reduced mana cost of skills per 10 devotion. And what that does is it allows us to entirely drop the dreamer wheel. Previously, we had to spend four points on dreamer 
and the Mana Mastery. Um, so that getting that mod on there saves four points. In addition, we are using an Unnatural Instinct to allocate the uh, a bunch of passives around the bottom. These small passives are pretty useless. We do get a bit of move speed, and we do get a little bit of block chance on the left. Tiny bit of skill effect duration, but what it's doing here is it's allocating all these small passives and giving us a ton of devotion from the Timeless Jewel. That devotion gets turned into stats we care about, right? Yeah. Um, and so because of this, this version, because of the pathing at the bottom, because of the unnatural instinct, this version has more aura effect, more energy shield, and is all around a lot stronger than the previous version. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, looks uh, looks good. You have an actual good synth helm now. You know, you <laughs> swap over to using Valkares. Uh right. Yeah. Get a get a plus two. Uh, same with Syntrex. Eternal Struggle is, I think, like the best in-game aura bot amulet, right? The attributes and defenses are it's, absolutely uh... amazing. The aura effect. Yeah. yeah. CI versions that sometimes have to run Ashes, and while Ashes can be good, like, I don't know, Eternal Struggle is just way better. It's, it's just too good to give up. Like, You're... Reservation, you can get... Uh... There, there are. There's a very rare version of the build that like would prefer Ashes later on, but Reservation is a stat that you can pay for, um, even if it is costly sometimes. Or effect is a stat that you can only get in like four gear slots, and the eternal struggle is is a very efficient. Uh, a two, the amulet slot's a very efficient way. It's a two mod item. So effect. ethical. You're probably trying to get intelligence. Yeah, we still have dexterity still have on this one. That item here. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You know, rings. You I just mean, we use keep it ethical. What you can even have. the higher investment versions. We we invest only in the most important things. Uh, yeah, use of voices. This is kind of funny. I actually asked asked uh, Seek about this when I saw it. Instead of using two large clusters, we use a five passive voices and no large cluster. And it turns out that that's yeah. just the <laughs> that's just the superior it's way just, to go. It's just peak performance right there. It's optimal. Um, again, don't be scared. This is five passive voices. Uh, outside of day one, where they cost like ADC, they're just like a five chaos item. You know, it's not the three passive or one passive voices that are famous for being so expensive. You're also using forbidden um, flame and flesh here. Yeah. Get necro, big cast speed. Right. Uh, one thing I want to mention about the ascendancies is that if you're in content where, like, the main person purpose of Pathfinder is to maintain uptime on coruscating elixir, making sure that it's not dangerous to reserve the life that you do. Um, but if you're in certain types of content, such as juiced mapping, simulacrum, etc., um, you're going to be killing things a ton. Even bosses give a lot of flash charges between their phases. I would still recommend Pathfinder for bossing, but for other types of content, you can absolutely try um, dropping Pathfinder for Necromancer or Guardian, anointing the other one with Purity of uh, with Purity of Flesh, Forbidden Flame and Flesh, or not if you're on a lower investment version, right? And just see if you notice the uh, see if you notice any downtime on Coruscating Elixir because there might not be, right? Even if you don't have a bunch of investment in the tree, I think all we have is a Flask Belt with like Flask Charges gained. Um, you still have like 30 seconds of standing still, killing nothing, hitting no bosses, before all of your charges of Coruscating Elixir would run out, right? Um, so it's something to try if you're looking for a little bit more power. Necro is pretty crazy. Um, I'm sure the carries like it too, but I think of Necro as giving you a bunch of attack and cast speed and making your smite, your soul link, and your, your blessings feel really nice. It is absolutely... It does affect uh, both you and your allies. Yeah, it, it is absolutely forbidden tech, but with forbidden tech comes comes power, right? All right, aspirational... Like a forbidden flame and flesh joke there, but... There is, but we're, uh, we're too we, tired to find it. We said it too recently, it. maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. Then the aspirational endgame version... Uh, I think we went over this pretty well. This yeah. character is pretty darn broken. Uh, P.O.B. says it has an effective hit pool of a million. Uh, that is calculated a little bit strangely, but point is the character is tanky. It's got 10,000 energy shield, 95 of evade, 96 spell suppress. Uh, it can tank a fizz hit of 40,000 damage. Uh, so on and so forth. It is a pretty crazy character. Um, you can take a look at it more in depth if you want. Uh, it also uses a lot of alt qualities. Um, that's one thing you want to be looking at as you get into the really late game versions is 
Um, even without enhances, because you have so much aura effect, alt qualities can actually start to be pretty good. Um, they can be quite expensive, so it's not usually a cost-efficient upgrade. With a few exceptions, the high investment endgame version uses... Um, it actually gets away with uh, default quality inspiration. Yeah, that's something else um, I just wanted to mention, because that, that tripped a lot of people up. You know, you... Yeah. Uh, and if you ever want to get yeah, we, a little uh, bit we no longer cost, need that. Yeah, you can save a passive point dropping the mastery, which I mean I'm not in that version, you know. But yeah, yeah, it's uh um, it's another yeah, improvement. But like in the, the end game mapping version or the, the high investment end game version, we use like two alt or uh alt quality auras. I'd say the most important ones, which are anomalous defiance banner and divergent determination. Um in this version of the build, those two things combined give about twenty thousand armor. Um yeah. No substitute for actual gear, so like, don't go crazy with the alt auras, but again, uh, Defiance Banner, Determination, really mm -hmm. good options. I think we both have a bit of a problem when putting together new builds, like solo builds. You get excited and you start buying alt quality gems with like whatever budget you have, <laughs> and then before long... Yeah, you, and you uh... gotta get like your level 6 Awakened gems, you know, yeah. and it's like, hold on, I'm now, uh, I'm now spending... I started with 95 Divines, and I'm now spending 30 Chaos on my boots. <laughs> It just happens that way sometimes. What can you do? Yeah, so that's it. That is the, uh, I guess, the ultimate aura bot guide finished. Yeah, we uh, we made it through. This is actually our second recording back to back. We had a little bit of a incident with uh, something not being configured properly, so had to mm. collect our sanity and go again. So <laughs> hopefully we weren't too tired because I we were a bit more energetic on the first go around. This time we're just. Trying to stay sane, man. It's it's a struggle. Yeah. I'll try to get some sleep before League All Start. Right. Yeah, thank you right. for, everyone um, for watching. Yeah. We'll be streaming on League Start, especially if you're an Aurobot enjoyer, you've made it this far. Like, go watch Seek Stream. You're going to learn a lot, a lot watching them play. You know, join the Discord. There's a link in the description for that. There is like 4,500 people here who most of them are playing the same builds, same setups as you are. There's uh, ludicrously, a, it's a ludicrously helpful place. It's actually the, the Discord people, the Discord is like several hundred people more than the actual YouTube channel has subscribers. You know, that's how you, that's yeah, how I, you I, know it's a good that place. Happened, you know? but that's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. Got, got, a, it. got a good community there. You know, we've got like a 110% conversion rate on YouTube subs to Discord members, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Best of all luck. Right. Yeah, best of luck on League Start to, you, to all of you.